Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Real Steel Knives Loader. So first off, though, in the name of full disclosure, I want to thank Real Steel for sending this guy along. They reached out to me, said, hey, Nick, we want to get you a Luna. I said, well, sure, but first, uh, read my disclaimer. It's on my website. You're gonna have to, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Might be a gem, might be junk. Um, they still did send it along. We have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature or quality of my review, but there you go, full disclosure. Next thing, size comparison. This is actually actually not a very large knife. Throw it down here next to the Spydeco Delica, the Ontario Rat Number 2, which is around here someplace. Um, here it is against the Spydeco PM2. Um, and so we see here that this is this is pretty petite in, in a lot of ways. And in terms of sharpened blade length, almost identical. And blade profile is pretty damn similar to the Ontario Rat Number 2 there. Um, and uh, there you go. And then actually I'll throw it up against another uh, relatively recent modern style slip joint. This is the Benchmade Proper. This is the the S90V and carbon fiber version right here. So anyways, um, there, there you go. Next thing, this is a design by Poltergeist Works, which is a uh, company that I, I wasn't super familiar with. I probably should have cleaned the blade ahead of time, but I'll do that as I'm talking. Um, it's a, uh, a Polish gentleman whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce out of respect, um, but it is a, uh, he's done some really cool stuff, and this is one of those things that he has done that is, in fact, pretty damn cool. So I appreciate that very much. And then finally, there were a bunch of variants of this knife out already. Um, for instance, this is the uh, Micata version uh, with S35VN. I've seen other colors of Micata with it as well. Um, there is a titanium and N690 version out there. I've seen a carbon fiber and N690 version, which I think was a Blade HQ exclusive. Um, but this is 116 bucks as it stands right now. Um, the titanium one was 95 bucks. The carbon fiber and N690 one was 90 bucks. Um, all of those are uh, great. So uh, you'll see a bunch of different versions of this out here, but this is the Micata version. And uh, there you go. So let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of uh, this uh, very interesting little knife right here. So on the good side, to start with, um, it had a very easy disassembly. Uh, for a lot of slip joints, that can be a, a matter of concern, but in this case, it turned out not to be at all. That was a great thing. I appreciate that very much. Next thing, the designs, uh, design on this is actually quite attractive. I find this to be a, a pretty knife, and I, I, I feel like Poltergeist Works did a very good job of that. I'm um, giving it something that is, especially with the Micarta, simultaneously pretty modern in the blade, but pretty traditional in the form factor. So that's good. Next thing, size on this guy, at least to me, I, I appreciate very much. I tend to like smaller knives. And so this guy coming in at 2.75 is going to make it not only, uh, pardon me, a size that is reasonably nice for uh, everyday carry, but also going to be legal in a bunch of places, especially around Europe where uh, locking knives are regularly frowned upon. So that's good. Next thing, safety-wise, this is actually a very safe knife. A lot of modern slip joints, especially ones with relatively weak back springs, which, by the way, this absolutely is, um, tend to have uh, questionable safety. They tend to want to close on your fingers. This guy is not, for two reasons. To start with, this has a partial stop. I'm not calling it a half stop because it's actually stopping at, like, 65% or something like that, a 70% stop. Um, but that's actually smart because that's the point at which it would start getting towards your fingers. But more importantly, it has this surface down here. This little area right down here, as you are gripping the knife naturally, your hand is actually holding the blade of the knife. And so even if you were to get caught up in something, you know, if you're, you're cutting into a box and, you know, your hand slips or something like that, um, this will keep the blade secure. I'm really trying to push this blade closed, and it's just pressing against my finger there. That is fundamentally different than some of your other slip joints, where there is not that area, where it's very, there's really nothing keeping the blade from closing, aside from, for instance, a half stop or something. Um, so this ends up being a very safe design. Um, it is almost impossible, and mind you, life finds a way, so I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it would be very, very difficult to accidentally close this guy onto your fingers. And I think that's a very compelling thing that a slip joint can do, especially if you're not relying on the back spring for safety. So that's good. And then finally on the good side, um, I am not a, generally a fan of nail nicks, but this guy using this big fuller here is very easy to open two-handedly. Maybe an easy open notch would have made that even nicer, but honestly the design is nice enough and it's easy enough to get to that this makes for a very easy two-hand open, which I appreciate very much. And having the clip on there, uh, yeah, that gives you some nice modern convenience. So anyways, um, that, that to me is the good here, is that uh, you've got a clip on there, which is a nice modern convenience, although it is definitely removable. Um, it has a nice uh, two-hand opening with this little fuller here. Um, it's got a uh, an area of safety, basically, uh, well, a measure of safety, because you've not only got this 65% stop, but you're gripping onto the blade itself, so it's very hard to close accidentally on you. It's got a nice size, a nice design, and easy disassembly. To me, though, what's great about this knife clearly is the blade. 
It's hard to show off just how damn thin behind the edge this knife is, but oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This knife is thin with thin stock and a super thin grind. This cuts like crazy. And given that the blade steel here is S35VN, which is a stainless steel, um, which is great relative to a lot of your traditionals, um, and it's got a great sharpening choil, this is an amazing blade. Like, this blade in and of itself is great. Um, the rest of the knife is almost incidental. Happens to be good, too. But yeah, the, the, the blade on this is amazing. This cuts like crazy. It's a, just an absolutely great blade. I appreciate that very, very much. And to me, that is what's great here, is this blade with this super thin grind in S35. VN. Uh, on the bad side, to start with, the clip on this guy is not ambidextrous, so there's no way to flip it around. And actually, if you were to remove it, which I think a lot of folks might consider, it's a little big to be a conventional, you know, pocket slip slip joint, but, you know, uh, it will leave a little gap on top of the handle there. So that is something you want to keep in mind and may not be ideal for some. Um, next thing, the uh, lanyard hole on this guy, honestly, really... Really? I, I feel like this is just like, yeah, I guess we need a lanyard hole, thunk, and then they punch it out of there, and it's just like, no, why? Why lanyard mafia? Why why must you do this to us? Um, So there you go. Next thing, the fuller on this guy is, unfortunately, so there's a full flat grind, which is great. But the fuller is part of that. So that means that the top part of the fuller is a little bit uh, further out than the bottom part of it. So that means this is going to catch stuff. It's going to bind up a little bit in cardboard. Not the end of the world. And you will definitely get whatever, you know, there's a crud groove here. This will, you know, trap whatever you were cutting today and give it to whatever you got now, uh, tomorrow. But that's it's just a thing. It's not the end of the world, but it is it is there. Next thing, the back spring on this guy does stick up some a little bit above the spine of the knife here. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not an amazing fit and finish thing. They've chamfered the edges, so it's not a major issue, but there's a thing. And there's also, if you have the knife open, this little area here isn't super satisfying to your traditional knife fans. Um, it, it's definitely kind of got a feeling of like... Hopefully that clarifies things for you. So anyways, um, th th there you go. Um, that is a, uh, that's a thing. And then, uh, finally, uh, this is actually not quite finally. Uh, this has a very weak spring on it. Um, the back spring on this guy is not super impressive. It, it just doesn't take much to close this. I believe it not to be a safety issue because of all the other safety features I was discussing earlier, but it's definitely not. If you were into traditionals and you like a strong spring, that ain't gonna do the thing. And then finally, this comes off to me is a little bit pricey. Um, it is Micarta and SVN, or S35VN. Uh, not SVN, that's a, <laughs> that's an old version control system. Nerds represent. Anyways, an S35VN. Um, and so that's, that's a good chunk of change right here, and it's well done. It's well designed. I can't get too bad out of shape, but Real Steel has historically been a value-first brand, and this doesn't feel like the kind of impressive value that they you know, were once really strongly delivering. And especially for N690, 90 bucks is way up there. Um, I, I, I don't know. I would then, this feels probably closer to 80 or 90 bucks. And then that other one is just like, really? Like N690 feels more like 60 or something like, yeah. So anyways, this just feels a little bit pricey. It's not the end of the world. And certainly if you're looking for a slip joint that cuts well in S35, you're going to pay that price. It's solid, but I just, it, real steel should be bringing the value, or at least I sure wish they still were. So to me, that's what's bad here is that the value proposition isn't amazing. It's got a weak spring. The back spring fitment isn't amazing. The fuller definitely grabs stuff. The lanyard holds a little lazy, and there is no ambidextrous clip. On the ugly front, uh, there's actually nothing really ugly here, so we'll go into the final conclusion, and that is actually that this surprised me a little bit. Because honestly, in modern slip joints tend to have weak springs. They tend to have safety that is sort of so-so as a result of the weak springs. They tend to have relatively thick blades, thick grinds, unconvincing designs. There were, there, there were exp uh, I'm sorry, exceptions, of course, but I find I'm disappointed more often than I'm pleased with modern slip joints. But this night, this pleases me. It's got easy disassembly, a nice design, a nice size, a partial stop, a gym flat for safety. Um, it, it's got two-hand opening that's very easy and a very impressive blade. And although certainly the lack of an ambi clip will frustrate some, the fuller will, you know, grab a little bit of stuff from time to time. The bat spring fix a bat spring. That's the spring that keeps your Batman mask on. And, uh, but I mean the back spring here is what I, I meant there. The price isn't super motivating. And if you're a slip joint purist, this back spring isn't going to really say you. But on the whole, I was very pleasantly surprised. And this guy adds up to quite a compelling little experience. It is far from traditional. Um, you look at this guy and aside from the Micata, it's like, no, that's, that's pretty modern. But at the same time, it's doing enough traditional things right that it still works out well. You still have traditional style cutting power. You still have relatively thin stock. You still have easy opening and you still have 
have actually a modicum of safety on there, even though it is a slip joint. And so I appreciate that very, very much. I do wish that they'd pressed a little harder on the value, particularly for the N690 models. And that's the main reason this isn't going to make gem. It's a great knife, and I'm sure you're going to love it, especially if you're willing to kick in that little bit of extra, you know, cash that snuck in there someplace. But if you are looking for a slip joint knife with modern materials, excellent action, and a nice design, then I think you could absolutely be over the moon with a real steel Luna. Uh, anyways, there you go. I hope this has been interesting to you, that I don't come across like a lunatic in reviewing this, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.